Well, this question looks a little bit familiar, huh? So I really had high hope for this question on the midterm, but it didn't, it didn't work as a midterm question for some reason, maybe through no fault of its own, but I, I think the policy is if something fails as a real exam question, it automatically gets demoted to be a practice exam question. Maybe now is, is its time to shine. So um, this is a string tracing question or a string and pointer arithmetic tracing question. And it is uh, of that style where the, the prompt will say there is some variable in main, this variable str, stop tracing immediately as soon as a modification is made to this specific index of it. Um, so I'll trace through it. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I did leading up to midterm two and cheat a little bit and, and I've actually drawn in my, um, my array there. So here's my scoping box for main. And uh, just like I talked about on midterm two, there are times when it's okay to uh, take a few liberties with our scoping diagram. And I'm gonna do that in one case here. It's gonna happen in both functions, which is that I am not going to bother completely erasing the scope of the for loops every time I get through an iteration. Because if I look at the for loop, if I look at the contents of each for loop, it's pretty clear there are no scoping shenanigans going on in there. And so it is relatively safe for me to do that. I mean, in general, these diagrams are just a visualization device. We can take whatever liberties we want. I would encourage you, if you notice things like nested declarations or stacks of if statements and while loops, to probably err on the side of drawing the full scoping diagram. But none of that stuff is happening here. Um, okay, so in main, I create this string called str. And it's there, and it's of type array of char. And its initial value is the string, rather unsurprisingly, the string raspberry and we get a free null terminator because we've specified it in double quotes. And then inside of main, there is a for loop that happens, and I guess I should draw the nested scoping box for that. Uh, there's my for loop, and my for loop has its index i, there it is, and i starts at seven. And I will need to pay special attention to the fact that inside of main in this for loop, uh, i is getting decremented by two every time. It's a strange looking loop that starts at a high number and goes down, and it goes down by two at each step. Uh, okay, so I have that. Uh, and now I wanna call this function smear. Uh, and actually I'm gonna clean this up a bit because I'm probably gonna need to read that in a minute. Uh, there we go. This is pretty, pretty bad architecture here. All right, um, I have my function smear, and it takes as its argument a pointer p. So I'm passing in a char star, and the specific one that I'm passing in here, so on my first iteration of my for loop, the specific one that I'm passing in is an arrow pointing at str sub i. Well, i is currently seven, and so an arrow pointing at str sub seven would be this. And I'm also actually, I'm gonna shade this in to remind myself that as soon as I modify this element that we're done. So I have an arrow pointing at index seven of this. And you'll notice inside the smear function, I use square brackets on my pointer. And we know that that's valid. I'm allowed to do that. Um, the behavior when you use square brackets on a pointer is follow the pointer and then walk this number of steps ahead. So if I ask the question, is p sub zero equal to null terminator? What I'm asking is if I follow the arrow from p and I walk zero steps into the future, so in other words, I stay here at index seven, is this thing equal to the null terminator? And it isn't. So I don't enter this if statement, I skip right down to the for loop. So we'll make our scoping box for the for loop in this function as well. There it is. And i starts at the value one. All right, so then I ask the question, because this loop condition is non-obvious, I should make sure I ask it at every iteration, is p sub i equal to the null terminator? Okay, well, follow the arrow from p. i is equal to one, so I follow the arrow from p, I walk one step ahead, that's the letter y, that is not equal to the null terminator, and so I uh, step into the loop. I actually execute the body of the loop. Okay, the first iteration says p sub i equals p sub i minus one. To avoid confusion, I'm actually gonna sub in the value of i there. So p sub one equals, okay, well one minus one is zero, so p sub one equals p sub zero. Okay, so what is p sub zero? Follow the arrow from p, walk zero steps into the future, that is the character lowercase r. All right, what is p sub one? Follow the arrow from p, walk one step forward, and now set that to be the character uh, lowercase r, all right? Um, 
and then I iterate, uh, I finish my iteration, I increment the value of i, it is now two, and then I evaluate this loop condition again. All right, p sub i would be start at p, walk two steps forward, and then that gives me null terminator. And of course, that means the loop has to end because I, the condition is when it isn't the null terminator, and right now it is. And so the loop ends and the function ends. Um, I'm going to take another liberty here. Because I know I'm about to call this function again and there are no other scoping shenanigans in sight, I am going to leave the box on my diagram. And I'm even going to leave the box for the for loop because I have a suspicion I might need that again in a minute as well. But I will clear out the variables just in case. So I end up back in main. Uh, and I'm done with line 12 now. And so I continue to the next iteration. I take care to update by uh, decrementing i by 2. Okay, so i is now 5. And then I ask the question, is this greater than 0? Well, yes, it is. So I go into the body of the loop again. All right, and I call my function smear. Well, hey, look, isn't it great that I saved that box? So I create my pointer p. And notice how even though I left the scoping box on the diagram, I did erase the variables just in case that would have made a difference. Uh, and my pointer p in this case is arrow pointing at str sub i. Well, up here in main, the value of i is 5. So I want p to point at this element of my string. All right, and then I'm ready to start executing the function. I ask the question, is p sub 0 equal to the null terminator? Well, follow the arrow from p, walk 0 steps into the future. Uh, it's the letter e that isn't the null terminator, and so I jump into this loop. Okay, great. Good thing I saved the scoping box for that. So there's my variable i. It is set to 1 to begin with. And then I ask the question, is p sub i equal to the null terminator? Well, follow the error from p. Walk one step in the future. That is not the null terminator. And so the loop iterates. All right, so uh, line 6. Well, I'm going to sub in the values of i just like before. So p sub 1 and then p sub 0. Uh, okay, so what is the value of p sub 0? Well, follow the error from p, walk 0 steps in the future. That would be the character lowercase e. And now I set uh, whatever I get to if I use p sub 1, I set that to lowercase e, follow the error from p, walk 1 step in the future, and then set that to e. And of course, this is the box I was watching. I've just modified index 6, and so now I am done. I stop immediately. And the prompt at the bottom here says, what was the string... Notice the use of this word. What was the string stored in that array when you were done? Now remember that if it asks you what the string is, you start at the beginning and you keep going until you hit a null terminator. Now it didn't happen in this question, but if there had been a null terminator put somewhere earlier in the array, the string would now be shorter. It's important that you keep that in mind. But here that didn't happen. So what is the string inside this variable? Well, let's see. It's this. And that's the answer to the question.